So last night we ended up picking up Joe. Uh, his flight was supposed to come in, or he thought it was coming in yesterday afternoon at 12. Turns out it didn't come in till 12 midnight yesterday. So me and Preston this week have got like an average of like two hours of sleep a night. Um, but Joe is here now. I just got to the gym. I got off work a little bit ago. For those of you who don't know who Joe is, so I've explained it before. Uh, I went to college with Joe's brother. And when I was in Korea, he reached out to me and was like, hey, my brother wants to talk to you about an opportunity working for your business and your supplement company and your gym. And long story short, fast forward to now and he's in Texas. The main reception's almost done. Um, so just to update you guys, you walk in, you have the mirror, reception desk, which came in this week. You come in and scan your card and then walk back into the gym. Casting couch, the famous casting couch. And then today we also got in our water fountain, which is gonna go in the gym. And I think it's getting installed. Um, next Monday. So I'm officially going to introduce Joe to you guys and I'm going to let him tell you why he decided to move from Pennsylvania to Texas. It's like spontaneous move, why he decided to do it. So I was watching Nick and Preston on YouTube and I've been watching the YouTube fitness community for a while now and uh, I was just sick. I was paying for a school, like paying for a degree that I didn't want. I was uh Working a couple jobs, I did masonry, and then I've been uh, helping my dad lately. And I just I was I wanted to do something that I was actually passionate about. So uh, I had my brother reach out to Nick, and uh, here I am. All right, so today we're doing like our first full workout in the gym. Uh, this past weekend we did like a, a small like deadlift workout with chase and some bicep stuff, but today we're actually doing a full leg workout. Uh, so pre workout we're doing one scoop of flight. So our pre workout, and then one scoop of endo pump this is like my office now so I moved the Mac that was in the reception area into my office me and Preston's office because I personally wanted the computer uh, so today we have to buy another computer for the reception area and then what I've been doing intra workout is uh, I've been mixing half a scoop of intra flight lemonade half a scoop of intra flight watermelon just because I love the flavor like mix of them and then one scoop of creatine which is Five grams creatine monohydrate. So in that package that Silent Mike sent me like a week ago, uh, he also sent the hip circle. And I've always seen people use these. Like I've seen Matt Vincent use these and stuff before warming up. And uh, I just did a few laps with it. I never realized like how much you would actually feel it. Like it, it actually burns and it opens up your hips quite a lot before squatting. It's still extremely surreal that we're lifting in our own gym finally. Stay hidden. That was easily like the best squat workout I've had in well over a year. Like the bars are brand new, so like the knurling's really thick and it digs right in your back. The squat rack's really good, like the floor is solid. Um, so I worked up to 405, which I haven't done for a hot minute. But I'd, I have to say that like, I think the most underrated and underused leg movement is barbell lunges. Barbell lunges hit my glutes, they hit the inside of my quads. Like I just overall feel them the next day. I already feel them. So right now we're at Ikea. We are picking up casting couch number two. Um, so we have one now in the reception area and we're buying this one right here for in the main office. Uh, because with that, that conference table there, which is gonna act more as a desk and instead of putting chairs around it, we're just gonna put a couch in there. All right, let's get it. We are back at our usual spot 
Freebirds. We brought Joe for his first time ever. The thing is, we brought Chase to Freebirds last week, thinking like he'd be blown away and think it was so much better than Chipotle, and he still thinks Chipotle's better, which blows my mind. Um, but we just got our, our quote we were waiting on. We've been waiting on this for like two weeks, which quoted the rest of our strength equipment. Like everything we need for the gym to just finish off everything is right here. Um, so a lot of the machines are new or used, but I'd say like they, they range from like $700 to $2,000. Um, if you buy a lot of the stuff like brand new, it's upwards of, of $3,000 for some of this stuff. Um, but we're getting most of the stuff used to save some money total we're probably going to spend another thirty thousand dollars on equipment um so like right now we're somewhere around sixty thousand of what we spent so i guess at the end of everything we'll spend close to ninety thousand on the gym total the lighting in here at night is just absolutely insane like it casts shadows that make you look a lot bigger than you really are uh but tomorrow that wall is getting painted black so it's gonna be flat black over there and then the inside of the cardio room that's gonna be cardio room now that's gonna be painted black as well and then tomorrow we're going to finish the floors after everything that's painted. And then what we start doing today, just as like a little test, is uh, we're adding sealer to the middle of the cracks and in between all of the matting uh, so that it's water resistant and waterproof so that we can wash it uh, at night and stuff. Because when we open the garage doors, a lot of stuff tends to come in like leaves and dirt and stuff. But uh, we're going to place our order for our equipment within the next week. So we should have everything. Um, within like, I'd say two or three weeks. We also ordered our competition style elite FTS benches yesterday. So we're close. I think we're on track for our grand opening, which was templated January 1st. So Preston and Joe left, I'm about to leave, uh, but I just like sat down for a breather quick, just to like reflect on everything that's going on right now. But there's one question I did want to touch on. I've been getting this ever since starting this whole gym process. It's what am I gonna do if the gym fails or doesn't succeed in the way I've like planned and projected it to. And to tell you the truth, like there's no backup plan. There's no plan B. And I've done this on purpose. Uh, reason because if something does start going in the wrong direction, I'm forced to implement changes in order to make it succeed because there is no other option. It's like, it's either success or success. That's, that's the way I see it. There's always something you can do or implement to, to change um, a success rate or it's its course of action of where it's going. And I think that's like one of the, one of the like main reasons I was so like fond of Joe coming down here. Like I've, I've barely talked to the dude. We had like one phone call uh, when I was in Korea. Other than that, it was all over Facebook Messenger. And I think it's because like he was so uh, stern about like making a change and seizing an opportunity. And I was like, dude, I see like myself in this kid uh, because like he knew what he wanted and the opportunity was there and he had no second guesses about it. He didn't have to double think. There's so many people that I've talked to about coming down and working with me in the gym and I brought it up and they were, yeah, 100% on board and then things start getting serious and now, man, I can't do it. Uh, but when someone like takes advantage of an opportunity like that, that's, that blows my mind. I mean, that's, that's how I've gotten bare performance nutrition and the gym and, and all this stuff to where it's at right now. It's, it's seizing that opportunity and taking action. And uh, I'd say, and I brought this up before, uh, one of the things I'll always like reflect back on or remember is when I first started Bear Performance Nutrition, I was telling my dad the plan of how it was just gonna blow up in the first month of sales. And he like sat me down and he was like, it's not gonna happen like that. Like, If it was that easy, every single person would do it. And he was absolutely right. Like, three to four years later and it's finally taking off. But it took time, it took a lot of time and uh, there was a lot of failure. So I've like learned that if you don't have a plan B, you're kind of forced to make plan A work because there's, there's no other choice or option. So that is the video guys, I'm about to head home and get some sleep. So I will talk to you guys in the next video.